Hello, everybody. Hello once again. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. It keeps going. I love it. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to SDVOE Live. I'm your host, Justin Kennington, and this is TV for Pro AV. Today we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart, and I have to think near and dear to the hearts of every true AV guy or gal out there watching and out there in our industry. And that topic is more TVs and bigger TVs, right? Who here, show of hands, who here doesn't love a truly giant TV? Anybody? No? I don't see any hands. There you go. We love it. I remember the first time that I was sort of standing in the same room as one of these new, you know, direct view LED displays that we're going to be talking about today. It was uh, a full 4K display, and this was the year, I'm going to say 2014 probably, so 4K was pretty new to the scene. Uh, this thing was 22 feet wide, it was 18 feet high, something like that, however the math works out on 16 by 9. And, and I remember we had it installed in, in the warehouse. I was working at Crestron at the time. We had it installed in the warehouse for some testing. And I watched as, as 50 different everyday video engineers walked by this thing and were just frozen in their tracks. Because that's what a 20-foot wide 4K display does when you're standing this close to it, right in front of it. It's amazing. It's jaw-dropping. Uh, and more and more, it's how large displays are installed, whether we're talking about stadiums or, or retail environments or, or just large, you know, public venues. Uh, the SDVOE case study list is littered with these things, um, from the, the Circa install in downtown LA to the American Dream Mall in, in New Jersey. Uh, I even had another one in my head that I have forgotten about now. Uh, but go check out our case studies. Let's read all about them. Anyway, our guest today, Chris Chinook, president, founder of Insight Media. Uh, he is the guy if you need to know about trends happening in the display space for AV. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk to him about. W what are DV LEDs? Uh, how have they evolved over the past 10 or so years since they came to the market? Uh, and, and where is this technology headed? So stick around for that interview. Stick around for the after show. Get your questions in to live at sdvoe.org, and we'll bring those questions right to Chris. Uh, and we're going to see you in a few minutes uh, with Chris. But first, you guys go look at a quiz. Matt, 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 get on in here. <sighs> We got a hot one today. Yes, we have. How are you, sir? You good? Good. I'm good. I'm good. You're out of breath already. It must be a busy day in the Hotline Central. Can you hear it? It's all going on here. As per usual, a team of moderators is here on hand, multiple languages from all over the world, uh, to take your questions. So please get them in. Uh, Chris is here with Justin to talk about big tellies. And I'm going to be joining him a bit later on as well. So get your questions and your comments in. Email live at stvoe.org. Or, of course, use the chat function below if you're in Academy, which I hope you are. Use it. Get involved. Get and join, the, join the debate. Uh, give us your feedback on the show as well, because it's really important. We like to know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, who you want to see next. Uh, just tell us. Get involved. Talk to us. Uh, as, as per usual, Justin, we have, um, we have a question. This time, all the way from here in Blighty, which is nice. Bill from East Anglia says, just how small... Just how small can DV LED screens get? Mm. Is there any limit to fine? Is there any limit to fine pitch? Any limit to fine pitch? It's going to be a really. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a cracker today. Um, and I'm. I, I found this really groovy. Uh, I found this really groovy sweater as well, which I need to tell you about in a minute. I can't wait to see it. By the way, who said we're doing anything wrong? What is this? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, you've Why got don't to give you forget about all that. Come on here to the studio and join me. Say it to my face. Oh, down those stairs I go. Here he comes, here he comes. 
Look what I found today. I've, I picked this great sweater up from, uh, from, from the city today. Uh, it's, it's the designer stuff. Good, isn't it? Is, is that a sweater? It looks like a jumper from here. Very good. See what we did there? See, we, you could put water between us, but you can't, you can't stop us from mixing and muddling around our languages. No, we've just been shooting this afternoon uh, in Clavia Studio 3. We've been shooting a fantastic new course right here on Academy. Uh, so if it's not up now, it'll be up within the next hour or so, or a couple of hours. It'll be there, um, all about ASICs and FPGA chips. You'll love it. So I've come straight from there, straight to here, because I'm just that kind of guy, JK. Just that kind of guy. What do you think to that? And I think it's great. Shall we do some news? Wait. Beat me to it, didn't you? You beat me to it. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that's a dog's head, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, not, not responsible is that, for that. Is bit. that an orangutan watching TV? I can't see. Yeah. I see that's a dog's yeah. ear, not an orangutan's arm. It's, it's, it's okay, a, it's no a problem. Orangutan. No problem. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, as they say. Well, you can, because this first piece is really, it's a quick lesson on DVLED. Um, it talks about... Uh, you know, it gives you some examples of how we've been used to things like um, pitch, pitch, pixel pitch, forgive me, there's a lot of content here, pixel pitch of viewing distance, resolutions, for example, normally with flat panel displays and projectors, the image size can vary, while the resolution remains constant, but that's not the same with direct view LED. Things change. Uh, the individual LEDs or pixels on the surface of the module, um, they're a fixed size. So as the, the size of it changes, so does the resolution. Am I getting, am I, did I get this right? I think I've, You've got I've it been right. to school you know, if I, if this I go to, if, I go, if I go to the electronic store and I say I want a 4K TV, that's roughly about 4,000 pixels wide, 2,000 pixels tall, yeah. and I can get that as 30 inches or 50 inches or 75 inches or 80 inches. You know, the pixels get bigger and smaller to fit the 8 million pixels on a single display, right? With, with, with direct view LED, what we're talking about is the sort of, the pixel itself is a defined size, right? And you'll see that in the pitch, right? And we'll say, oh, I have a 2.5 millimeter pitch. I have a one millimeter pitch. That's, that's basically how big are the pixels. Um, and so if you have one millimeter pitch and you want a 4,000 pixel wide display, guess what? It's gonna be 4,000 millimeters wide. That's it, full stop. If you want more resolution, you get a bigger display. You want less resolution, you get a smaller display. Now, of course, if you need to change size while keeping your resolution, well, then you look at different pitch displays. Maybe you get a 1.25 millimeter. Maybe you get a 0.75 millimeter, uh, et cetera. But it becomes one more item to, to, to be flexible about. And you have to think about this when you're thinking about your viewing distance, right? Are you building something that's gonna go on the wall at a retail center where somebody might be 10 feet away looking at this thing? You'll need a very fine pitch so that the pixels aren't too large, so that they don't get, you don't see that pixelated image, right? Meanwhile, if you're building a stadium display and it's 90 meters wide and the nearest viewer is 200 meters away, suddenly you can use a much larger pitch, much larger pixels uh, to give you that great size of display and you don't have to worry about it being pixelated because the viewer is so far away. Thank goodness this is all being recorded so you can go back over the archive, get your pen and paper out and go back and make some notes. Because <laughs> somebody just pulled the ripcord on the back of you there, Justin, which is fab. We love it when you do that. <laughs> Whoa. It's a good, <laughs> it's a good article. And, and there's, some other, there's other considerations you know, to do with the pricing and cost considerations, you know. Uh, remembering that as the pitch, pi pixel pitch decreases, the equipment cost increases or anyway take a look at the article because it's fascinating and it gives you a really good very quick as you've just seen the, the article plus justin gives you an amazing very quick course um on direct view led we may even do a course like this soon what do you reckon that might not be a bad idea why not why not i and I then, apologize for my, my strange accent to you, Matt. I'll try and speak more slowly. No, not at all. No, Listen, I'm in the minority here. It's fine. You do, it's, it's great. <laughs> News article number two, a world first. We should have had a, should have had a, a sting there, maybe, Paul. Oh, for a world where's the world first, first sting, Where's Paul? the world first sting? Come on. Uh, world first. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly a world first sting popped up there? That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? World first. Moss, you thought Moss was bad, right? Wrong. Moss is not. Bad, is it, Justin? It can be useful, it turns out. These guys, uh, what's their name? Green City Solutions. That's it. Have developed the City Breeze, and you see kind of a picture of it there. This is a, 
This is a, an out-of-home signage, digital signage display to be installed in the train station, you know, in the downtown corridor, the taxi stand, etc. Give people information. But built into this thing is some sort of moss, literally, like, is that a Clever plant moss. or is that like a fungus? Well, Whatever moss yeah. is. So this living, this living thing that cleans and cools the air around it. So, so now the city council gets to decide, uh, oh, well, we want to put in some signage. We want to inform our citizens about when the next bus is going to arrive and we can clean and cool the air at the same time. Uh, as they say in their, in their, I don't want to be cynical here, but as they say in their amazing marketing, like, how, why would you not? You know, if you're going to put in digital signage, why would you not put in digital signage that cleans and cools the air around it? Why not? Um, and it, it, it's also really helping to tackle the, pro the problems that are currently all over the world, really, of air pollution and rising mm -hmm. urban temperatures. So, you know, there's a real green pitch to this. Crikey, you can come over to our, any, any garden in the UK uh, and take as much moss as you like, and nobody's going to complain. Um, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's really having a, it's going to, it's designed to have a massive impact uh, on on uh, on air pollution, uh, it's a bit of an e innovation, really, in, in clean air generation. They claim, they claim that, that the this unit here has the capacity to filter, and I am going to to read this, fourteen hundred cubic meters of air an hour, which is pretty impressive. And you think they're going to increase this now and have lots and lots of them all over the place, one hundred and fifty of them going out this this year. Apparently, it's amazing. Check it out. You've got an interview to do, I'm going to leave you to it, uh, and I'll guess back again. So have fun, I'll see you in a bit. It's nice to see that, that intersection of, of AV and sustainability as a, as a growing trend. Our guest today uh, is Chris Chinook. He was one of our very first guests on SDVOE Live, talking about 8K. Uh, today he's here to talk about Direct View LED. Why don't we bring him on in? Chris, are you there? I am here. There we are. Well, hello, hello, and welcome back to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So, Direct View LED. First of all, you heard of these? You heard about this? <laughs> I have. Excellent. I knew we got the right guy. Um, so, so let's dive right in um, because I, I want to talk about the trends. I want to talk about a lot of things. And honestly, we, I don't think we'll get through it in, in the time we have. Um, Direct View LEDs were built to be big, right? That was the idea. You know, I don't want 65 inch TVs. I want 65 meter TVs. Um, and yet the trend that I observe just going to trade shows and walking around and seeing who's building things is, is that they're getting smaller. So what's that about? Why, why are we trying to make them smaller when their job is to be big? Well, actually, before we dive into that, um, maybe let's, let's, you, you talked a little bit about pixel pitch. Um, uh, which you are correct, um, but there's another factor to consider, and that's the size of the LED itself. So that okay. size can vary greatly from, you know, millimeter sized or bigger down to micron sized. Uh, so there's a whole trend to talk about micro LEDs, mini LEDs um, that can be used in uh, direct view signage and even in uh, in VR and AR headsets. So. We'll come back to that. Oh, really? Okay. So, so why try to make them smaller? Why, why do we want smaller so, LEDs? Why do we want smaller pitch? Yeah. So, um, and there's two things here. One, the smaller LEDs is a cost issue. Uh, that's less material you have to use in the LED. Uh, that helps bring down price. So there's a valid reason for wanting to make that LED size, the die itself, smaller. And then the pixel pitch itself, you want to make smaller um, because uh, you can get closer to it now without seeing the pixels, right? Um, mm -hmm. So anything that's indoors that has relatively close viewing, you want to keep shrinking that pixel pitch. And, and again, pixel pitch and pixel size, LED size, are completely independent. Um, you can have a, a one millimeter uh, LED display that has, you know, half millimeter LEDs or a, a tenth of a millimeter LEDs or 10 micron LEDs. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, it's, it, it does matter, but there's, they're, they're independent somewhat. Mm -hmm. I have to imagine that, let's say all things being equal, and maybe they're not, and maybe that's what we'll talk about, but all things being equal, a smaller LED will have a smaller light output. Is that, is that the case? 
And then the follow-up is, are all things equal, or is that about improving the process? Yeah, it's, it's, they generally will be uh, lighter, lower light output for the smaller ones. But actually, as you start to get really small, you can get to these tremendous um, uh, outputs, especially when you're talking about uh, VR and AR headsets that are, you know, uh, um, t single microns or tens of microns big. We're talking about millions of nits of light output. It's it's crazy. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Let's talk about that because I hadn't even conceived it. And, and, and I wanted to talk about what applications... Uh, are there for for smaller DV LEDs, but I had no idea that you were going to say VR and AR. We're talking about panel sizes that are like an inch, right, or two inches. Is that is that am I picturing this right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, or or smaller, absolutely. Yeah. So, so you know, you 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 you, can, you make projectors, right, with uh, with three panels, and it can be three uh, LED sources, larger LED sources. Well, you can actually make. Um, little VR headsets that are like mini projectors with micro LEDs, red, green, and blue micro LEDs combined in a in a cube prism. Now, is there any? Now I'm really just going off the rails here. But if <laughs> if you can build a, a panel that small, and and with that kind of light output, couldn't you, in theory, use that as the as the image source for a projector? You know, put a yep. lens in front of it and, and beam that image onto a screen? And is anybody working you, on that? You could. Um, well, yeah, there are people working on that for sure. You know, the, the wow. LED projectors that you have now are where they're really, they're, they still use micro displays, panels, um, but they have large area LEDs, basically the size of those panels. Um, but you right. could those are just light sources, right? Not image them. sources. Exactly, exactly. It's a light source, yeah. not an image source. So you could potentially replace the image source and the panel with a pixelated micro LED with lenses Whoa. and projection optics, as you suggest. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm going to hold on. Let me go patent. Matt, can you call the patent attorneys? Get this, get this down. I'm sure, I'm sure this was an original idea I just had, except Chris said that he's <laughs> already working on it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, when I was thinking about smaller panels enabling new applications. I was thinking about, you know, 10 foot wide panels, five foot wide panels, not two inch wide panels. So talk to me about what applications are we opening up as we get to the five or 10 foot wide panel class? Right. So what you're seeing is, you know, the, the trend started, I think, in commercial to make smaller, smaller sizes, smaller pixel pitch so you can be closer to them. Um, and now we're kind of seeing this move into the 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 high-end custom install space. So mm -hmm. companies like Samsung um, have already commercialized a uh, 110-inch uh, display they call the wall. Um, it's, it's both for professional as well as high-end consumer. Um, that's a single unit that would go into a luxury home. It costs about $150,000 or so. Um, and they have announced plans to do smaller sizes. I think it's like 88 inch, 90 inch, 99 inch, um, somewhere in those range. Again, single units. These are basically big TVs that you bring into the house and are direct view. They're amazing. So, so once you, I mean, 150 inches is an awfully nice size of big TV, but once you're talking 88 inches, you're now into the class of of big flat panels, you know, just run down to Best Buy and, and pick up an 80, 85 inch TV uh, for 5,000 bucks. Yep. Uh, I guess my question yep. is how much of a, why would somebody buy a 90 inch direct view, let's say, instead of an OLED today? And, and if, yep. and, and and how much of a threat is direct view to the OLEDs, to the traditional flat panels today and, and in the near, you know, five year future? Right. So. The, the, the value proposition of, of direct view LED, and I think ultimately this is, this is going to be the, the display technology that everyone's going to want for every application almost. Um, it's, it's just, it's brightness basically and, and color gamut. So, um, so compared to an OLED TV, it will have very similar black levels. Uh, it will have probably a wider color gamut than an OLED panel and it will have a, a more brightness than an OLED panel. That's one of the limitations of, of OLED is they have limited brightness. Great contrast, uh, great black levels, uh, good colors, 
somewhat limited brightness. I shouldn't say it's totally limited because it's plenty bright for most applications. But, you know, if you want to go super bright, um, then you then LED has an advantage. Right. There's there's bright for your living room and then there's bright for an outdoor football stadium. Those are those are two different kinds of bright. Go. Right. Um, you mentioned a, a sli- maybe a slightly wider color gamut. Is that just from a sort of manufacturability perspective? I can better control exactly which fundamental colors my 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 LEDs are compared to my OLEDs, or, or what? Why would I get slightly better color yeah. gamut? Well, it's 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 both. You can control the wavelength of the LED more. You can pick what wavelength you want, which defines yeah. the, the 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 points of the color gamut. But it also um, depends on the full width, half maximum, the, the width of that uh, emission, right? So LEDs have a fairly narrow emission, 30, 40 microns, okay. somewhere in that range. Um, OLEDs have a broader emission. Um, so you can't get, you can't go out to the extremes of the color gamut with a broader emission. So you can, you can get right. more saturated, more deeply saturated colors with, with LED. Uh, and depending on where you place those, that means a, a, a larger color volume or color gamut. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, and uh, go learn about color gamut in the SDVOE Academy, everybody. We've got some great courses on it in there. Um, you've already touched on the answer to this question. Um, I was going to ask, you know, okay, so so we can see the applications moving into the residential space. Um, in the commercial AV space, the way I want to ask this is, are there any applications in commercial AV that that DV LED might not dominate one day? It feels like, you know, if we can make them in any size we want, we haven't talked about shape yet, but we can sort of make them in any shape we want. They can be extremely high brightness. Mm-hmm. They can be extremely high contrast, high color. Uh, what, you know, what what can't they do? What what other kinds of displays might survive? Well, the, 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 cha- the separator is going to be cost. Um, there's always, the yep. LEDs are still expensive. Uh, so there's going to be plenty mm-hmm. of applications where a lower cost solution uh, with a little bit less image fidelity is going to suit the bill, right? Um, I mean, projection mapping right now on buildings is, uh, is a great application for projectors. Right. But if you go to, uh, you're already seeing this now. In fact, I was just back from NAB and on, on the Hilton Hotel, brand new hotel there, they've, the whole side of the hotel is now uh, LEDs. <laughs> so wow. there you have it. Projection mapping goes LED. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, amazing. Let's talk about let's talk about form factor. Something I've been interested in. When I, and whenever I think about uh, uh, LEDs or or the digital canvas concept, is the fact that uh, well, for those who don't know, in general, the very large ones are are put together in in individual panels. Right? Maybe these days those are probably 50 or 60 inch panels that get mounted all together in, in a uniform way. So what you see is a giant display. Um, but that means that we're not really stuck to this world where a display is a 16 by 9 rectangle, you know, no matter what. Um, it becomes a world where you can really build any size and any shape that you want. So I guess, I guess talk about that. Have you seen any, any place where that has been um, a, a killer app yet? Or is that just a dream that I have, that one day all TVs aren't rectangles? Just look in Times Square. Almost all of those displays are non-16 by 9. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're huge vertical aspect ratios. They go around the corners. You know, they have the parts and pieces that go here and there. This, this is clearly the, one of the big advantages of LED is you can do this mix and match kind of uh, aspect ratio stuff. It's, it's, it's great. That makes sense. Um, there's a lot more I want to ask about. Our time's a little limited here, but we're going we're gonna to come back in the after show. Some things I want to touch on. Uh, the electronics that drive these panels, how is that different in a flat panel versus a, a direct view? Um, and also, how do we supply video to a panel that large? And I mean that two ways. One is, you know, literally, what, what do I plug into this thing, or presumably its controller box? Uh, but then number two, how do I create content? Um, you know, a lot of our content creation is based around 16 by 9 rectangles. Um, so I'm curious to learn about some of the, the tools and techniques used, you know, to generate what, we're, what you're seeing in Times Square. So sit right there. You guys stay still, too, because I, I want to touch on all these things and your questions. Get them in live at sdvoe.org uh, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, so Chris, sit tight. We'll be right back to you. 
Uh, and I'm going to throw it, you guys, over to a fact check. He's good, isn't he? He's really good. Uh, can't wait to talk to him in the after show. And thank you for your questions so far. Don't forget to check out the resource panel below where you can see our news articles, the stuff we talked about earlier on, plus the courses which support today's discussion. There's uh, one called The Ugly Truth, um, video over 1G, The Ugly Truth. And that's good because it explains the need for high quality distribution for large displays. Well, the other courses that are on there explain how large displays are actually driving the demand for higher resolutions, especially in the live sports vertical. Um, there's a good live sports, so SDV in live sports course in there. Uh, also, check out the, the American Dream case study in the news articles tab. We didn't get to talk about it today, but it explains how SNA displays uh, plus SDVOE technology is powering the largest mall in the northeast of the US. So it's really worth checking that out in the news articles. The American Dream. We'll be heading back to chat with Chris uh, very shortly in the after show. But for now, we're going to head over to Justin to find out what's happening. Uh, we've got IC coming up. IC is going to be fantastic. How many of you are going out to that? Tell us in the chat. We need to hear about what you're doing next week. If we're going to see you, if you're going to go out for a beer with us, it'd be fantastic. So uh, I'm going to see you in the after show and I'll head back to Justin now. Worth bringing up ISE, Matt. Thank you. I'm flying out Friday night. Uh, I have not been on a jet airplane in over two years. Uh, I can't say why, but I think you know. Um, I want to highlight that uh, we are having an SDVOE cocktail hour for those of you at ISE on Tuesday afternoon at 5. If you are a certified design partner or a certified SDVOE developer, you are welcome to come to our party. If you're not, look around the academy here uh, and get yourself certified. Um, find us at the hashtag SDVOE Live. You'll find us on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Catch us up there. Give us your feedback. We want to hear from you. I want to offer a special thanks uh, to our sponsor this week, Black Box, one of the steering members of SDVOE Alliance, um, and a really great contributor to everything we do. Looking forward to seeing them at ISE. Uh, our next episode in two weeks, and speaking of ISE, uh, our friend Gary Kay will be back on the show. He kicked off this season. Uh, with a wrap-up of Infocom, which had just happened the week before. Um, so now we're going to see how has the AV world changed in a very eventful and, and still kind of, you know, things are in flux. Uh, what has it been, seven months now? Um, so we're going to see what's changed, what's the same, what are the new trends, what is the progress on the old trends. Gary's going to be here to talk us through everything that we saw and learned about AV over IP at ISE. So don't miss that on May 17th. Uh, we do this <coughs> every two weeks. Uh, if you do miss a live show, then head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SDVOE Alliance. Like us, subscribe to us there. Uh, hello again to everybody watching in the SDVOE Academy, everybody watching on launch. And we've built a really good following on LinkedIn. So if you're seeing this live on LinkedIn, thanks for joining us there. I will see you in two weeks. I will also see you in about 45 seconds at the after show. So sit tight, don't move a muscle, get your questions in, and thank you. <laughs>